Okay. Now, here, everybody, uh, take a paper, pass it around. Everybody gets one of those. That's what you're gonna put your answers on. Oh. What you're gonna do? What you're gonna do with that is you're gonna go ahead and do your. Um, you're gonna do your stuff here. We're gonna go through these questions. And what we're going to do is we're going to let you trade papers and we're going to let you grade everybody else. We're going to see who does this. Now, it's best to start, remember this, you may remember seeing this handout before, uh, pressure test, mainline pressure is what you're going to use. Mainline pressure will be checked in each range. You know, part neutral, drive, three, two, one. All of them yeah. except part neutral, you're going to do a stall speed test while you're checking it. So, now, it's slightly different when you've got electronic transmissions where you're going to manipulate with a scan tool. Did you have an extra one? Some anybody not get one? Dustin's not here. Huh? Okay, Dustin's not here. And obviously we have a guy that came without a pen and he's hoping to be, come up here and hack around the timeline. Uh, borrow the pen from your neighbor. Whenever he answers, you can answer. But if you copy his answers and he messes up, fail the test, you'll pressure him. All right, let's just go ahead and plow into the questions and see what we see here. Right. Internal leaks will generally show up how when you're doing a pressure test. Internal leaks will generally show up how. Put your best answer on there. Will they show up in a particular range? Will they show up as a stud regulator valve pump? In all ranges or in part or neutral only? Pay attention to the question and put your best answer down there. A, B, C, or D. You don't have to write all the words. Just put A, B, C, or D. These will be graded. This will probably this will be one of your daily test grades, and it will be a, a huge part of your grade. You know I'm saying you better be able to do this off the top of your head. I may I may give you this for a verbal exam, like the other one. <clears throat> Don't y'all just love verbal exams where you can't take notes and you have to know the stuff, right? List, define, explain, and all that. All right, you ready for question number two? Anybody ready for question number two? If all pressures are within specifications at slow idle, what does this tell us? There's a potential pump problem, the pump and regulator are functioning properly, there's an internal leak, or none of the above. Let me know when you're ready to move on. Everybody ready to move on? No. Diagnosing the throttle valve or modulator, <coughs> what should you do first if stall pressures are low? Should you replace the fluid in the filter? Should you drive the vehicle for a week with the pressure gauge installed? Should you immediately perform another stall test to see if the readings are different? Or should you pull the TV cable to maximum or disconnect the modulator vacuum line to see how it changes the pressure? Think about your answer very carefully. Of course, if I give you a visual, if I give you a verbal test on this, the questions will be totally different. It'll be me and you in the office, right by ourselves, no notes. We'll just have to see how you do. That could be probably part of your, you know, final exam. If I decide I want to do it that way, because I am the boss and I'm in charge. Okay. All right. Everybody got that? Everybody through with this one, right? Mm -hmm. If pressures are high at slow idle, what does this tell us? A. There's a pressure regulator or throttle pressure problem. B, the filter is restricted. C, there's an internal leak. Or D, the pump is spinning faster than the engine. Your best answer. This test will be graded before we leave this classroom today by somebody that may not even like you very much, your peers. All right? Everybody ready? If pressures at stall speed are high, what's stall speed? Describe stall speed. What's stall speed? Lock the park brake, stand on the brake, put it in gear, forward accelerator. Stall speed is where it stops, right? In other words, where it stops accelerating. It's going to come to a place, and you're basically using the transmission for a dyno. You know what I'm saying? The stall speed is supposed to be at a certain level. If the one-way clutch in the stator is out, 
and the stator will turn either way, your stall speed will be low. Got me? All right. You got it? No. Do you change the fluid in the filter? You pull the TV cable or disconnect the modulator hose? Look at the idle pressures. Check for loose engine mounts or bad brakes. Everybody done? Everybody ready? Anybody still thinking? How can we look at pressures and tell the pressure regulator valve is stuck? The line pressure will be fixed. There will be no boost in pressure from the throttle valve of the modulator system. There will be no reverse boost or all of the above. Okay. Hmm. Let me ask you this. Why do you need a pressure regulator valve? Without a pressure regulator valve, you got no pressure. The pump doesn't produce pressure, it just moves the fluid. The pressure is produced as it pushes against the spring behind the pressure regulator valve. Let's see what she's got to say here. Hello? Yeah, I got this minute. Sirens are going off in Enterprise. Yeah, Alf is under a tornado watch also. Mm -hmm. Is that good? Ah. Well, it's under a tornado now. watch. It's going to get to the That's it. We're all going to die in school. <laughs> Not today. <laughs> well, maybe. Then you better go home and tie it down. <laughs> <laughs> I ah, was down. The new chair? To the chair. All right. All right, let's go. Thank you. Who said it? Yeah. Okay. So, how can a pressure test show you a restricted filter? Think about it. The line pressure will be fixed at high. The line pressure will be fixed at low. The pressure will drop gradually at high RPM. The pressure will be high at slow idle. Handout, there's gonna be a pop test. You your subject, you get a pop test for me at any time. It's a test. Okay. Can you become better? How can you become better at recognizing abnormal pressure readings? See that? By becoming accustomed to normal readings, by checking pressure on as many good cars as possible, by installing a gauge on my own vehicle and watching it for a few days, or all the above. Yes. What? Did I do back up? Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I just probably should have done that. Right there. I didn't mean to jump ahead. I was in here when Mikey said it. You'll, you'll meet my feet in a minute. Humidifier here. All right, you ready for the next one? Mikey says it's best to start pressure test by checking TV pressure. Carrie says it's better to start pressure test by checking mainline pressure. Who's correct? Mikey, Carrie. Did you write these tests? But of course. Why did you have to solve that way then? Hmm? 
What is it, Matt? I was wanting to make sure that nobody had their. I, w I didn't actually. I wasn't picking on anybody. You know, I could have said, you know, Zach or Zane or, you know, Which one's that? Brian, Brian, Adam, Napper or whatever. You know. <laughs> you know the answer, right? Everybody got it. Ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six. Page one. Hey. Trade papers with somebody. Immediately. Trade papers with somebody. If you uh, if you trade papers with somebody you don't like, that would even be better. Always remember to bring a pen. If you come without a pen, you know, as if you make everything free and easy, everybody comes without a pen every day, and you got to give out 12, 15 pens a day. You know? I, my pen came up missing. My words at primary. You know what? My pen don't come up missing. Brad's right here. Hi. When in doubt, blind the hospital. That's what everybody does. That's what Brian does. Well, the high school kids, so keep, the high school kids keep drinking my sodas out of the freezer. And then it turned out that the high school kids didn't touch his Pepsis. It was Napper. I'm sure they did it once. Well, I put a sign on the thing that said, "Don't drink anything out of this." Who wants to sand the refrigerator down and paint it toolbox red? Wouldn't that be cool? We need a toolbox. No, the red last time I cleaned that thing out, there was a rat in it. Huh? I said, the last time I cleaned that thing out, there was a rat in it. There was a rat in it. It was a mouse. Was he frozen? Yeah. If she thought that was a rat, she hadn't seen a rat. Okay. Richard. Huh? Huh? Let him use a pen. The pen. What pen? Right there. In your shirt pocket. Uh, I don't think so. These pins stay in my pocket. You, uh, you know what will happen? My pin will be gone. All right. Answer key. Jonathan gets 100. Internal leaks will generally show up in a particular range. All right. If the answer is wrong, it's your of the person's paper you're checking, check it wrong. Internal leaks will generally show up in a particular range. If all pressures are within specifications at slow idle, that tells us the pump and regulator are functioning properly. Okay, if the person who's test your grading got that right, raise your hand. Very good. That's a pretty good law of averages there. Okay. Now then, come on. When diagnosing a TV or modulator or equipment system, what should you do first? Pull the TV cable to maximum or disconnect the modulator vacuum line to see how it changes the pressure. One of the things we're doing when we're trying to troubleshoot anything is we want to gather data that we can use to sort things out. And uh, you know this thing that you guys were fighting with on the park light, park rate light, you know, out there? Was one of the things you did that uh, was a piece of data that you could use was you found out that, the, and, and you were kind of thinking in the right direction, you were trying to find, does the light work at any time? If the light didn't work at any time, maybe the bulb blown. But it worked when it's low on brake fluid or whenever you, you know, touched it out there. So you know the light's good. You know the wire was good going into the light, and you know the light had power, but the grounding part of it was what you're concerned about. Anyway, you're gathering data, you're sorting it out to find out what the true story is. If pressures are high, it's low idle. Oh, this is another Philip Johnson story. He was actually wanting to know why it is when I'm driving this Cadillac when I watch the windshield that the low washer lap comes on, but only when I wash the windshield. We're working on a Cadillac. We didn't have any books on a Cadillac in the Ford store. And I said, so you're washing the windshield and that light comes on? Yes, yeah, but it's full of fluid. I said, well, the, the uh, sensor in the washer fluid tank is bad. And he says, but, but how do I know that? I said, because I just told you. <clears throat> so anyway, they got a, one of those. And he said, but what he was doing, was he was trying to figure it out by shorting things out here and relays click and all this kind of stuff, just trying to hack his way through it. Well, he says, but he says, why does it only work when that when you wash your windshield? And I said, you see how bright that thing is and how it's shining right in your face? Would you like to be driving on a trip between Bogalusa and Port Arthur and see that light shining in your face all the time because you needed washer fluid? <coughs> I don't think so. They're only going to let it shine. You know, they're telling you loud and clear that your washer blue. But anyway, you can think about the engineers. You know what I'm saying? You can think, are they going to have this light shining in my face all the time if I'm a Cadillac owner? No, they're not. They're only going to have it shine that way, so they wired it up like that. Anyway, when they put the reservoir on there, it fixes it. I'll bend it back up here. You got the right answer to that one, right? There's a pressure. If the pressures are high, it's slow idle, there's a pressure regulator or throttle pressure problem. Okay? Now this one here. Uh, this is five. 
Huh? Did we skip one? What number is this? Five. That's what I'm asking. Oh, I see what you're saying. All right. All right, let's see where we are. All right. One, two, three, four, five. You got it? If the pressures at stall speed are high in every range, what should you do? Look at the idle pressure. I know what that's got. What's, what, what's going on there? Huh? You like that? Is that pretty good? Huh? All right. How can we look at the pressures and tell what the pressure the pressure regulator valve is stuck? All of the above. The line pressure will be fixed. No boost pressure from the throttle valve or modulator system. There will be no reverse boost. Now, what is reverse boost talking about? You guys, you guys did some pressure testing, you and Zane, earlier. What did you notice about reverse when you were doing a pressure test? It's probably higher. Reverse is always a higher pressure than the forward gear. Got me? I mean, that's what they're talking about when they talk about reverse boost. How can a pressure test show you a restricted filter? The pressure will drop gradually at higher RPM. Why does it do that? Because it ain't getting enough fluid. Yeah, it's actually picking up trash or the fluid is trying to get through there, but it can't, right? Everybody clear on that? How's everybody doing so far on the test? Decent. One person in here failed. Yeah, there's no way to pass. All testing should always be done in Under operating conditions, after you check for broken mounts or bad brakes. Can you get like 50% of that right if you got half of it right? What? No. You either missed it or you either missed it or you know you got it right or you got it wrong. Well, that's one of the things that gets me in trouble because I go through and I answer questions really fast usually. And if one happens to be an all of the above, I'll hit the first question. You know, I'll say, yep, that's right, and I'll do it. And I may miss one sometimes because it's an all of the above. You're on the my seventh right. Now you guys are gonna you guys understand this. Here, let me make you guys another deal. Wait. Well, let me put it on film here. Um, let's say. That you want to get, uh, you know, you've done all your other work, and let's say you want to get a really, really good grade in brakes, right? Let's say what happens if you enrolled in the, you know, signed yourself up for the ASC brakes test and went to the Prometric Test Center, and you come back with a pass on that, we'll bump you up a letter grade. That's a pretty good idea, there. Or what if I promised you? He's not only just a bump up the leg grade. What if I say if you go take ASC brakes and you pass it, you know, like say with 75 percent or higher, then I'll give you an A on your brakes course. Of course, you still got to do your other stuff because you're not going. If you just bail on your other stuff and you do that, that ain't going to make it. See what I'm saying? So think about that. Take one. Just take one. The one you're most comfortable with: brakes, steering, and suspension, which is tricky if you don't understand a lot about caster camber and toe and pulling. Doesn't cost a whole lot. It's uh, 38 to register and uh, something like that. Yeah, well, you gotta you gotta uh, pay to sign up for it. And you gotta pay for each test. But you'll probably seventy-five dollars or something to take just one. However, if you take them all, you still only have it's just a fixed rate. I mean, they don't keep tacking on money for that. It's pretty cool. So anyway, so think about I doing that. Huh? Took all three on that one time. It's still gonna be the same price. I think if you take two, it goes up, but if on the third from the third one up, it stays the same price or something. So yeah, I mean, what I'm saying is, you can go online. I'll show you how to go online and sign up for them. It ain't hard to do. You take them online? No, you don't take them online. You got to go to the test center, and they wand you with a wand to make sure they make you empty your pockets, just like you're a terrorist or something. And you got to go in there and sit down with nothing but their two pencils and their piece of paper, and you've got a set amount of time to get through that test. And when you're out of time, you're out of time. You know what I mean? But I mean, they are. It's a strictly controlled environment. And when they get through, they print out and they tell you, they got, you hand you a piece of paper, this is what you made on the test. You don't have to wait six weeks for it to be scored because it's done. It's that prometric test. It's a cool way to do it. I like it better, the old paper and pencil test, you didn't know for six weeks. You know? All right. So, broken mounts or bad brakes, you, got, you don't want your engine trying to jump out of the car uh, under operating conditions, you know. Uh, basically, how can you become better at recognizing abnormal pressure readings? Becoming accustomed to normal reading by checking pressures on as many good cars as possible. This goes with everything, guys. If you want to find out what your scan tool is supposed to be reading, 
you can look at your scan tool on a bunch of cars that work right, get used to that, get to where you understand how it's supposed to work, and when you look at a car that's got a problem, you know right away. But if you just pick up a scan tool for the first time and you hope it's going to jump out at you or it's going to tell you what's wrong, you got to know what it's supposed to look like you may not know. If it's an in-range failure, it ain't going to throw you a code. But you know you got a problem. See where we're going with that? So make sure that you understand that. Uh, by installing a gauge on the home vehicle and watching it for a few days, that'd be a cool thing to do. You know, go to your port, wire you a gauge up in the dash so everybody can say, what the heck is that all that gauge doing, you know? Um, and then Mike, he's talking about that. Carrie is correct. Carrie says it's better to start pressure test by checking main line pressure. You want to know what your baseline is. Okay, so what I want to know is, it's, it's 10 points per question, okay? So, who made the highest score? I missed two. Compare scores, huh? I got what? an 80. Huh? I got an 80. You got an 80? Oh, cool. That's cool. What about you? I missed like four, four. You missed four? How many did you miss, Lane? You missed five? How many did you miss? He missed 40. missed six. Come on, bro. Huh? You missed six? Okay. How many did you miss? Price? He got 80. Huh? He, he got 80. Oh, he got 80? How much about you? Seven. Okay. All right. Now, did, what did, oh, did, right. is this an eye opener here? Are you are you all hot to try to go take your ASE uh, automatic transmission test? Mm -hmm. no. Okay, so if you felt like, if you guys felt like it, that you could take uh, oh, one ASE test and you felt sure you would pass it, which one would that be? I wouldn't break. Brakes. Huh? Air conditioning. Air conditioning? <laughs> I could probably weigh in brakes. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. All right. All right. All right. I'm going to show you something.